Welcome to Max ECU Training Part 28. This video we're going to be taking a look at working with our user-defined fuel and ignition timing compensation tables. These tables allow us a high degree of flexibility in defining our proper fuel and ignition timing as an offset against our main fuel and spark timing tables. So when we're doing our calibration process, main fuel and spark timing define what the base injector pulse was going to be, what the base spark timing is going to be. We have our modifier tables that we have in place, air temp, coolant temp, barrel pressure that offset fuel and spark so they get our, our delivery right for any kind of conditions we run our engine in. Now, as we run our engine, we may find that we have deviations or discrepancies on that. We might find that per gear, our fuel's off a little bit. That's a common problem. We can use our user-defined table to go in and reestablish fuel and ignition time and compensation per gear. There's so many more things that we can talk about. We're going to be exploring some of them in this video. Let's jump and check out how to work with these compensation tables. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our extra fuel and ignition compensation tables within our max ECUs. These tables will allow us a high level of programming flexibility to offset our fuel and spark timing from our main fuel and spark timing tables. So if we're finding a need to be able to have an additional compensation factor, we're able to achieve it within these tables. Now, let's jump in and talk about this so we understand exactly what this is going to mean and how to program and working with these extra compensation tables. So if we go here, beginning under start, and let's move all the way down here under tuning, we're gonna find that we have our fuel table, our lambda table, and our ignition table. These tables play a role in our base fuel and spark timing ca calculations that are delivered to the engine. So this is where we have everything started from. Now we know we have our compensation tables that can compensate against these values within the table. So the base value in our spark timing, for example, if we're getting too much intake air temperature, and we want to go and make sure we don't have knock or pre-ignition, we do have these default compensations here under ignition correction. We can offset our spark based on intake air or coolant temperature. We've talked about these compensations, these basic compensations in a separate video. So the idea of having a static compensation table here to offset fuel or spark should be very familiar. And we're going to find here, if we go down here into our extra fuel and ignition timing tables, that's exactly the task of these tables. These are going to have a fixed offset either in fuel from the fuel tables or spark from our ignition tables that we can integrate into our calculations for fuel and spark here, just as we find in our compensation. So this is going to be an example of ignition compensation under fuel here. We know we have IET trim. This will be compensating for an intake air temp moving around or changing. We also have one based on Barrow. So we know the combination between IET and Barrow that counts for the density aspect or the density portion of our fuel calculations that are coming from our main VE table here. So again, they, the concept here should be very familiar at this point. These will offset fuel or offset or spark depending on these fixed tables. So this is allowing us to not only have these as a factor to offset fuel or spark, but now we can get very flexible within these tables here. So let's break this down. Let's take a look at these tables so we understand exactly what's going on right now. Um, let's start off in our fuel table. We'll jump into our spark timing table. We're going to be looking at both and I'll run through some common examples of integrating extra fuel and ignition timing tables. You have some ideas to start off with. You may not want to integrate any of these ideas that I'm presenting in the video into your calibration file, but it will at least show you what's possible and then you can go from there. You can get creative um, as you're going along. If you're finding a need to have some kind of a compensation for fuel or spark timing, you know exactly how to achieve it within these tables. So within our extra fuel table here, we can find at the top there's a description. We can name this table's function or whatever we're trying to do with it. In this case, I'll leave that blank for right now. Extra table function one. If it's set to no function, that means this table isn't doing anything. It's, it's not live. It's not gonna be editing against my main VE table here, my main injector pulse width. If we go down to our dropdown, we have a whole bunch of choices to talk about. Now, we're only gonna be focusing on this video, looking at add percentage to main table and all the way down here to multiply percent to lambda table. These last two options, these are gonna be for our staged fuel injection. I'm gonna be talking about that in a separate dedicated video. So we're just gonna be focusing on our choices right here. Now, in the options here, add percentage to main table. This will add a certain percentage of fuel against whatever the calculated injector pulse was going to be. Pretty simple how that's going to work. So if I go in here and toggle this on, we're taking a look. The table right now defaulted in this example here is set to throttle position versus engine RPM. So just so we can see how this is going to work, if we take a look here, I'd be at 0% throttle. You can see our throttle's at zero. You see my engine speed's at roughly zero. If I allow the engine to fire up and run here, let's just get the engine up and running. We see it's idling right now. 
It's right around 1,000 RPM. And we can see the injector pulse with here. This will eventually stabilize out after the after start enrichment is uh, taken away. So that looks like it looks like it's stabilized here somewhat. There's probably some kind of a fuel correction going on. If we jump into fuel here, we should be able to see exactly what that's doing. Um, see after start enrichment's tapered away. We see coolant temp is going to be not modifying anything. The injector pulse width, I think she's going to be stopping it right at this point. It's going to be uh, uh, basing or stopping. Um, no, looks like it's still coming down a little bit. And there's some, some other kind of compensation being applied here. Uh, looks like our uh, lambda correction is, is on. And it looks like my wideband is not online here, but that's okay. So we're seeing here that, again, lambda correction is present. It's altering against the pulse width. Either way, now looking at this, we are operating right here. If we have our option add percentage to main table, if I just highlight this area here and I go and I add a value of 10, that's going to be adding 10% in this particular condition. So 0% throttle between 0 and 1800 RPM. So let's go here and click enter. Now the injector pulse width is going to be jumping up here. The base pulse width will jump up 10%. If I add 30%, into those particular areas. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.